Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome Chirp Chirpers. And we are now here in the Sprout Social Test Drive. We are going to look around, play around, show you a few of these uh, phenomenal features in Sprout Social. This tool is predominantly how I suggest to use it is for both publishing purposes, reporting, and some discovery on actual Twitter. It's a great tool to help you um, reduce your time, be more efficient, me, and, and be more effective as well. Uh, if you have a team of people, this is a great tool. It's sort of like a CRM, or not a CRM, but a project management tool. Um, you can uh, assign tasks to certain team members. You can have multiple team members on here. So it's a great tool for that as well. Uh, I like it too because the interface is really pretty. It's uh, it's nice. It's it's easy to navigate through. It's pretty simple to understand. Everything self-explanatory. They also do a phenomenal job in actually providing education. So you can get a free webinar. You can get white papers. You can get all this other information, and they really help you to use this effectively. So I do recommend you you at least give this a try. Uh, there's a 30-day free trial, so go on there, sign up, give it a shot, see what you'd like. And then we will probably have a special discount code for you to sign up uh, to get a, a, a special discount when you do sign up and decide to use this as a paying member. So look at that. Look for that in the actual book. All right, so here we go. This is the home page, and we look over everything. We have the group trends here. We have the audience demographics. You can see that I am attracting more males than females. Um, not substantially different, but a pretty big difference here, 63% by 37%. Uh, I also am attracting majority of them are in the 35 to 44, which makes a little sense because I'm right around there. I'm a little bit younger, but uh, people do say I have an old soul. Um, <laughs> but you can see that most of my, my demographic is right around the age group that I am in. So that makes sense. Um, you want to also gear this towards people that you're trying to attract. I definitely don't want to be attracted to people 18 to 20 or even 21 to 24. Um, as at least as of right now, because there will be a time where I want to help college students out. So when I do get to that point, then this number will, I will want to see that number increase. But as of right now, these are the numbers that I'm happy with that I'm looking to attract. That's something you need to keep in mind as well. Uh, as you can see on the sidebar, you have recent followers, you have team members, you can add multiple, multiple profiles. Sprout Social is a social media management tool. So that means you can add Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, you can add those other uh, tools, sites in there. Um, right now, for the sake of this uh, demo and for this book, I have only associated my Twitter account. So when you do set up your account, it's going to take about a day, about 24 hours, a little bit less, to pull in all the data and start to accumulate it so you can see these reports. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, just so you know. Uh, but when you get up to the navigation bar here, there's a few things. You have the messages, that you get messages, tasks, feeds. So you can actually see the feeds from your Twitter account or LinkedIn. Let's take a look. Uh, as you can see, I only have my Twitter, so you can see what's going on currently in real time, where it's coming from, um, all that information. And you can, you know, favorite, you can... Um, follow that person you can add a task to it you can reply you can do a lot of different things within here with that uh, another thing you want to look up in the navigation bar before we move forward is that you can actually compose tweets anytime right with this button um, or other messages going out to the other uh, sites but you type in your message you can add a picture you can add it to the queue you can schedule it and then you have it all set so if you see something that pops up in here and you want to compose a tweet, you can do that right there and then. Publishing is another area here, which is phenomenal. Um, this is really where one of the main suggestions as far as publishing um, post is that you don't want to always um, publish or schedule things out two weeks ahead of time, but you have the opportunity to do that. You can go ahead and add a schedule. You have the queue just similar to a Hootsuite or even a buffer. The only thing is they don't pull in the actual information. You can get RSS feeds that you can do that with, but as as Buffer does it for you, and they pull it from all these different places. So I think Buffer honestly has a leg up on that side of things. 
um, but you have the install and extension so you can pull in um, articles that you have been reading on the internet and just add them to your queue right from the navigation bar just like the buffer one up here and you can even compose the message so a lot of cool things definitely use it for the publishing aspects my two favorite parts are the discovery section and the reports and those are the next two areas that we're going to focus in on so the first thing with the discovery section what they actually allow you to do is they give you suggestions so they give you suggestions on people who you should be following and this is based off of um, who follows you in in this your followers so people who follow you but they you don't follow back and the great thing about this is that you can go through here and you can say you know what I don't want to I don't want to um, I don't want to follow Ben Court Realty uh, Aisha maybe and then I get down here and I see Brett Bell interesting um, he doesn't have a picture but yet it is somehow uh, it's it's a personal account uh, you can see Yahoo marketing team um, which is cool he's on there he's following me um, he's an influencer so or Sprout Social, I'm sorry, Sprout Social has uh, put stars on the side here that tell you if they're influential users. So that means that they're, that they're talking, people listen to them, um, and those are good people to interact with. So I actually might follow Brett here, but what I would want to do is actually go check out his profile more. Um, I can click here, go to his profile, and then if I say, you know what, I want to follow him, I can just follow him directly within here. So great great opportunity to do that next section conversed with so these are people that you have had a conversation with or really what I would say is that you you had, had some type of interaction um, Jose Canseco I did not have a back-and-forth conversation he happened to be in the news that I read an article that he literally lost his finger in a poker game that he was playing and he didn't lose it in the sense that someone cut it off because they he owed them money type losing his finger it literally just fell off because if you've heard he shot himself in the hand and he almost lost a finger and they try to put it back together and it didn't really work very well because it literally fell off during the poker game uh, i found it hilarious as you can tell uh, some of you might not but uh, i went ahead and made sure that my public my my community knew that i found that pretty hilarious and it made my day so i included his twitter handle into my tweet and that's why now he's popping up in here. Near, I mentioned him because I saw he was in the top five for New York Times bestsellers for nonfiction or for business books. I congratulated him. I've been following him for the last couple months, um, and he just favored my tweets, and so that's why he shows up. Phil and I had a little back and forth. Helene the same way. Aspen the same way. Roosevelt. So there's different reasons, but any any time that you interact with them or they interact with you, they're going to show up in this conversed uh, basis. So just so you have a clear message of that. Um, now, if we click on to have mentioned you, so these are people that have literally mentioned you in their tweets, and for whatever reason, they could have had a back and forth with you, a conversation. They could have um, they could have mentioned your your post. In your tweets they could have taken your blog post and put it in there and mentioned you in it um, there's a lot of different ways they could have actually had a conversation or mentioned you in their tweets but this is when those people show up and so they're gonna say hey you know what social sticks mentioned you you should probably follow them and um, I might keep that in consideration so you can go through here you can see who's mentioned you and you can do you can interact with them in some way shape or form and decide if you want to follow them next section here is the cleanup i love the cleanup section you should definitely clean up your account uh, every couple of weeks at, or so um, at least once a month and what it does is that it, it takes these people that maybe are like for instance in sprout social they have it categorized as silent accounts so people aren't talking that much they're not tweeting they're not really doing much at all so there's really no purpose to have have them in your community if you're not hearing if they're not saying anything for you to actually listen to so you might want to drop these people out uh, my, it's funny, my wife actually happens to be at the top here. Uh, she will be changing that. She will be more active because she's going to be reading this book right along as everyone else is. And she will be changing this up. And so you'll see her as more an active person. But uh, f 
for whatever reason we go through here and let's say uh, although I'm friends with Josh uh, he is not uh, an active Twitter user so I might unfollow him but I'm not going to because I like Josh um, but I would go through here and like this one I have no idea who they are how I got um, and how they became part of my community so I'm gonna say I'm gonna unfollow them so I do it right there and they are no longer in my community anymore so it's a good way to clean it up um, you have ir irregular usage there's none in this category for me right now and then you have other ones that do not follow you back so these are people that are not necessarily following you back um, you're following them there might be different reasons why you have to make the decision whether you want to continue to follow them um, I, you know I'm not a believer in the philosophy that you follow me and I follow you back. It's more so if I want to hear what you have to say. If Dominic is saying something that I like and he's talking about a topic and he's sharing good information, I've decided to listen to Dominic. And for whatever reason, he's decided not to listen to me back and not to follow me back, which is completely okay. You know, you got to set your ego aside for a little bit and it's not a big deal you know what my job is here is that if I like him enough and I find reasons to interact with them I'm going to interact with them and I'll guarantee you that after we have a few interactions he will be following me back so just to keep that in mind um, some tactical approach some you know philosophies and mentalities to keep in mind here uh, the biggest reason also, just real quickly, why you want to clean up your accounts every month or so is that you don't want to just to be accumulating followers um, or just following people back that um, that aren't doing anything. If you are following, if you personally are following 750 people, but you know 50 of those people aren't really doing anything or are active on Twitter, there's no reason to have them in your community. It's just a kind of taking up space. Plus, there's a psychological standpoint here where when people look at your account and they see that you have 1,200 followers and you're only following 600, they look at you as an influencer because there's that 600 difference right there in the middle. Um, now, if it was a different circumstance, if you were following 17,000 and yet, or you had 17,000 following you and then you, had, you were following 16,000, some people might see that 17,000 and say, wow. But what most people will know, and especially after they watch this, is that the difference, what, what happens is that they have 17, but they have 16 that they're following. So they probably had to follow those 16 just to get up to close to 17,000. So is that really influential or is that kind of cheating the system? I think it's the latter of the two. I think people who have a significant difference in between the ratio between following and followers are the ones that are really influential uh, gary fanachuk follows like sixteen thousand people but he has a million followers so there's a there's a big difference there and you can see it and when you see that bigger gap those are the people that are more influential so just a, a quick two cents right there uh, so to wrap this up um on this section discovery we have the smart search so we have, uh, you can go in here, you can search for keywords. It's very similar to doing like an advanced search in uh, Twitter. I do suggest that if you're doing searches like that, do them in the advanced search on Twitter. Uh, just you get better functions, you get better filtering in there. Uh, I'm sure Sprout Social will be working on it, but it's not really their main functionality. So don't don't worry about it. Um, so again, use use Twitter for that. Let's jump into the reporting here. And there are a couple things that I want to talk about here, and we only have a, a small window of time. So I'm going to I'm actually gonna stop this video and start another one, and then we're going to strictly just focus on the reporting for Sprout Social. So make sure you click on video number two here. Thanks.